My name is Mark Randall. I run the indices team at the JSE. I've been doing that particular role for about three or four years. So I have the great pleasure of talking to you about indices. Um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of what indices are, um, some of the key aspects. All right. So let us talk a little bit about where we are going, what I want to speak about in the next 25 minutes or so. Um, I'll try and keep to time. Um, I see there are still some snacks left, some biscuits. So I'll first one to get them will have the best biscuits. What we're going to speak about, first of all, is what, an in, what is an index at a very high level, very conceptual level, um, what it means, uh, why I do what I do. Um, then we're going to speak about who the role players are in the industry, so to speak, so who the different companies are that are involved. Um, basically, when something goes wrong, who do you want to phone? Because there are different cogs in the wheel and different people are doing different things. Um, and a question for the JSC may not be as applicable as a question for Mike or, or so on and so forth. Then I'm going to give you just a, a little bit of an overview, five or ten minutes, about some of the things you need to understand when you look at an index. Um, so when you, when you pick something to invest in, what are the kind of questions you want to be asking yourselves? Um, I won't get into the technical rules too much, but there are three or four key questions that you just need to make sure you're clear about before you pick your index. Um, and then we'll have some time for questions after the, after the second session. Question is, what is an index? And I can give you pages and pages of definitions. But really, at the end of the day, an index is just a basket of things. It's a portfolio of things. Now, those things may be tradable instruments. They may be equities. They may be bonds. They may be gold coins. Um, they may be a basket of consumer goods, like our CPI index, for example. Um, it may be uh, innovation levels or confidence levels. Whatever those things are, at the end of the day, an index just measures that. And it's, at its very simplest level, an index is one number. It's an average price level or an average level. So when we talk about the kind of indices we talk about tonight, we speak about indices of financial instruments. And that index level is just an average price out of all the things in that basket. Now, obviously, there are lots of questions. Uh, what goes into your basket? What kind of things do you pick? How many do you pick? How do you calculate this average price? There are all sorts of these questions. But those are really just details. So when you think about an index, think of this picture. It's a collection of things together. What's very important, however, is that you cannot buy an index. An index really is just a number. So someone like me or a company will sit and calculate this average price, we'll plug it into Excel or our fancy system, we'll put in all the instruments and we'll split out an average price, the, all, the top 40 is 46,000 index points, whatever it is, and we will publish that number and that is just a calculation. It's just something that the index calculation agent does according to a set of rules and we'll speak about the role of, of each person but you cannot buy it. So you need to get into an instrument that is listed on the index and there are these sort of layers of, of the index itself and then the instrument and then where you come in as the investor and I'll speak about that a bit as well. I think the eggs are probably quite an appropriate metaphor um, and, and for two reasons. The first one is that it's tempting sometimes to say I want to take a bet on a single instrument. So I think a single stock, and, and if we take something like Nuspass, which has done really well in the last six months, if you think the stock is going to do well, if you pick that stock and you're right, you'll make a lot of money. The problem is if you pick it and you're wrong, you may end up with an African bank, and you'll lose a lot of money. So one of the benefits of an index is diversification. It says, all right, if you're not the kind of person that wants to take a bet, which is what an active stock selection is, if you take a bet on a single stock, an index will give you exposure to something. Now, that something will depend on the individual set of eggs. It may be large companies, it may be small companies, it may be resource companies, it may be low volatility companies or rand hedge companies, and every index will have a different reason for existing, a different strategy. But it lets you get into that strategy without being dependent on one single counter. And yes, you may lose a little bit on the upside, you may not get the full upside, but you protect it on the downside because it's all sort of averaged out. And you're not taking that single active bet on that systemic or the specific risk of a single stock. Um, obviously, as well, there's a metaphor about not putting all your eggs in one basket, and I'll leave you with that as well. All right. Let's talk a little bit about who the role players are, who are the companies involved in this thing called index investment. Um, at the very lowest level, there is a market for traded instruments. That's what the JSC does. That's our core business. We provide a market for equities, bonds, and derivative products. Um, so this basically lets brokers come together into the marketplace through a, a set of systems and protections and there's regulation and there's rules and all sorts of good things and protection and you can buy and sell individual counters. Now as a member of the public you cannot trade directly on the exchange, you have to go through a broker 
um, in order to do your trading. So you'd approach your broker and say, I want to buy one Anglo-American share. Here's my money. You get your share. Everybody's happy. So at the very lowest level, the JSC provides an exchange, um, a, a market at least for traded products. Now, obviously, there are lots of markets. So there's, uh, every country's got its own exchange. Some countries have several. Um, but in South Africa at the moment, we only have the JSC for getting into these instruments. We then have an index calculation agent, which is where I come in. Um, so this is the company that would take those individual eggs, at least, which is in the green bar, and calculate this index value. Punch all the numbers in, spit up a value every day, and publish that. Um, now, there are lots and lots of people that calculate indices. Um, there is some regulation in the area, but there are some very big multinational companies that do it. So the JSE has got a partnership with FTSE International. So you may have heard of the FTSE 100, which is the headline UK index that's calculated by a company called FTSE. Um, we have got a partnership agreement with FTSE, um, and they calculate all of our FTSE JSE indices for us. So our top 40 index, our all share index, the RESI index, for example, all of those are calculated by FTSE, um, and, and they serve as, that, serve as that role. There are obviously some other agents as well. So you may have heard of MSCI, S&P indices, Russell indices. There's, there's a whole heap of them. Um, it's a very, very big business worldwide and growing. Um, and then, you know, an, an index really, if you think about it, you can do it at home in Excel. So there are um, some companies, a lot of the banks calculate in-house indices, um, and you can get all sorts of sort of ad hoc or specialist indices depending on what you're looking for. I think what's important is that, um, especially when we get to the, the blue and the red lines, the person calculating your index should be independent of the person that's selling you the product because you don't want any conflict of interest. So it's important, for example, for the JC, we calculate an index. We've got no financial benefit really in you investing in it, um, at least not directly. Um, so we offer it as that a service. Um, and it's up to us to maintain our independence and follow the independent rules and do all those good things. And it frees the, the, the product provider at least up from being able to develop the right product for you and sell you that product and that sort of thing. So it's quite important to have some independence between the index calculation agent and the index tracking fund, which is the next step. So an index tracking fund, really their job is to take your money and they'll take a bit of money from you and a bit of money from you and a bit of money from you and from some, some from Sunlum and some from ABSA and they'll put all of that into a fund. And they'll take that money and they'll invest it in the index. And I'll explain a little bit about what that means in a second, but basically they'll say, all right, the JSC, you've published the index, and you've said these are the top 40 companies you must invest in, and these are the weights, and we'll take this pool of money that you've given us, and we'll go and buy those 40 stocks in the right weights. Now, there are a couple of legal structures that, that this can work under, um, and the ones we're going to speak about tonight are ETFs and, and ETNs, um, but really it's all governed by legislation in South Africa, um, the Collective Investment Schemes Act, for those of you that like to read acts and legislation, I know I don't. Um, I get to sort of page three and my eyes glaze over and the definitions and that's not for me. Um, but there is very, very strong regulation governing um, the, because at the end of the day it's your money. So the legislation is there to protect a company from taking your money and saying, all right, I'll invest in the top 40, I'll tell you that, but what I'll actually go and do is go and buy oil paintings, you know, and hopefully this will make money and I can pay you some back and I'll keep some. There's none of that. The industry is very well regulated. Um, in fact, under a collective investment scheme, um, which is either a unit trust or an ETF, um, the company is legally obliged to take your money and invest it in whatever it's supposed to invest it in. In addition, um, that money is ring-fenced. So under a, a, a CIS structure, if the company that's running the fund happens to go bankrupt or into curatorship, whatever the case may be, your money is ring-fenced, it's protected, and it won't go to creditors, it'll come back to you. So there's a lot of legal protection for you as the investor um, to, to ensure that the company investing your money does exactly what they say. All right, uh, the, the, the two key ones I'm going to speak about are ETFs and unit trusts, um, and they both work exactly the same legally. They're both a fund uh, where you put lots of people put their money in and you buy uh, own a share of that fund, basically. Um, the difference is that an ETF itself is listed on the exchange. So with a unit trust, you would go to, to Sunlum, whoever the provider is, and say, I want to buy one unit in your fund, and they'll say there's 300 Rand, you'll give them the money, you'll get your one unit or your one share. And ETF works exactly the same way, except those units are listed like shares on the exchange. So you can go and sell it on the exchange intraday. Um, if that's a bit technical, don't worry, it's effectively the same structure. Um, and ETF just gives you a few benefits in terms of, of liquidity and some investment platforms. All right, the problem now is that there are a lot of these funds. 
Um, so, for example, there's 44 ETFs listed at the moment. There's about another 28 or 30 ETNs. Um, unit trusts, there are hundreds and thousands of them in South Africa. There is a very, very long list. So now you can imagine, how do you pick one? And also, if you're now going to go and sign an agreement with every provider, you're going to say, all right, I want to give, you know, 300 Rand to Satrix, and I want to give 200 Rand to RMB, and all of these different baskets, if you like, of eggs, it becomes sort of administratively burdensome, which is where platform comes in, um, like ETFSA, that's exactly what Mike Brown does. He says, all right, what I'll do is I will act as the go-between for you, um, because I've got access to all of these funds, which you can buy directly if you want to, but what I'll do is I'll give you one single interface, you can sign with me once, and then I can take your money and I'll invest in whatever fund you want. It's easy to switch between funds. It's easy to invest in a lot of funds at the same time. So it's really just a layer that says, how do I make things easy for you to get into more than one fund um, or other kinds of products? And then finally, most important, because it's your money at the end of the day, and don't forget that it's your money. You've got the right to decide what you want to do with it, um, is you the investor. So I think the most important lesson there is that you are responsible for your own investments. Um, and I'm very glad that you're here because it shows that you're interested in getting educated and being and learning about what's going on. But at the end of the day, it's your responsibility to say educated, go and read, watch TV, read the internet, come to these sessions, phone the JSC and talk to people. There are lots of people that want to educate you, to help you, to explain to you. Um, so if you feel like it's too complicated, it just means you're talking to the wrong person. Um, I, I speak to, obviously in my place, I deal with a lot of corporate clients, institutional clients, and these are the people that are actually investing the money. And they still phone me to say, how does this work and how do these rules work and technically what happens here. So don't feel like you don't know anything because you probably don't and that's fine. But the people knowing stuff are also phoning and asking and checking all the time. That's how we work. All right, um, just a few things you need to understand and I'm not going to get into the rules, um, but just a, a few very important things. When you pick an index, um, you'll pick the index first and then you'll pick the product. The first one in the green is the asset class. Um, I think probably one of the most important decisions you need to make is what asset class you want to invest in. And that could be equities, it could be bonds, um, it could be uh, commodities like gold, it could be derivatives, um, it could be all sorts of things. And each asset class has got very different characteristics in terms of risk and return and, and all the basic things. So at the very core of it, we generally wouldn't have an index that mixes asset classes. Um, so I understand first of all the asset class. Secondly, the selection, which is the, the yellow one there. Um, how does the index provider go about picking which eggs go into your basket? What is it based on? What does it look like? Are there big eggs and small eggs? Is there concentration? Is there diversification? What exactly is your money going into? Because remember, you're going to pay once for the index, but it's then going to go into 40 different stocks. Okay, so you need to understand what you're getting. Um, all of these things are available, by the way, um, either on the, on the provider's website. So when you go into the ETFSA website, each fund will have a fact sheet. It'll tell you this is where your money is invested. These are the top 10 weights. This is the historic performance. Go and read all of that before you buy. Um, then weighting. So now that we've, let's say we've picked 10 companies to go in your basket, how do we split your money? Do we put a 10% into each one? Do some companies get more of your money than others? Um, that sort of thing. Um, and then finally the rules. And there are often lots of rules. There's rules about liquidity. There's rules about free float. There's all sorts of things. Um, most indes indices will have a rules book. Um, you're welcome to read it. I'll phone someone and ask them to explain it to you. Um, and in fact, I, I, in fact, I would almost say that I would, ex I would expect any index you invest in to have the rules somewhere on the website available for you to read from a transparency point of view. So go and make the effort, find the rules, read through them, and just see exactly what you're investing in, how is it calculated, how do they do the average, how often does it change, how volatile is it, and so on and so forth. All right, that is my overview. And I will jump into the top 40, first of all. All right, so I'm now obviously talking uh, with my FTSE JC hat on. This is one of the indices that we calculate. As I said, there are lots of other indices. Um, so I'm not really selling my own product because, thankfully, I don't have a product. My job is to educate. But at the same time, there are lots and lots and lots of other indices out there. So, for example, we calculate around about 120 indices every day. Um, but there are other companies in South Africa doing the same thing. There are lots of options. That's just South Africa. Okay, keep looking. All right, so first of all, the FTSE, top, uh, the FTSE JC Top 40 Index. Um, asset class is listed equities, so it's only shares. Um, there's no bonds, there's no gold, there's no commodities, there's no derivatives. Um, the selection, basically we pick the 40 biggest companies on the exchange, and that's based on market capitalization. 
what market cap means basically is if you had to go and buy every share of the company, if you wanted to buy the whole company, how much would you pay for it? Which is a lot of money. We're talking trillions, lots of money. Um, now, that basically says there are a certain number of shares in issue that the company has issued, and each share has a price, and shares times price equals market capitalization. We then say, how do we weight the indices? In the top 40, we weight it by market cap. Um, I'm going to talk about three different variants, but basically what market cap means is a company that's really big in terms of its size will have a bigger weight in the index than a small company. All right? Um, and they're really the purpose of that is it's designed to reflect the market as a whole. So if you think about it, every share out there is held by somebody, is held by an investor. So if you measure all the investors in South Africa, the total size, there'll be more investors in a big company than there are in a small company, just because the company itself is bigger. And our market cap indices are designed to reflect that. So basically it's an average of the market holdings of all the investors in South Africa. All right. Um, now that obviously brings some complications. I'm going to speak about a little bit about concentration because our market itself has got is really dominated by some really really big companies, um, SABs, Old Mutuals, BHP Bulletins. I'm going to speak a bit about those. So because those companies are so big and because so many people are invested in them, they tend to have a very large weight in the index. Okay. There are some variants I'll speak about, um, but just remember that it's very very important. You're not. We're not taking your money and spreading it 40 ways and putting, you know, 2.5% into each of the 40 companies. It's weighted differently. Finally, the rules. Um, our rules are available on our website. I encourage you to go and read them. Um, our website has got a new facelift, so it's a bit easier to find everything. Um, if you do get stuck, you're welcome to email me or phone me in my detail. All right, no index discussion to be complete without a graph. Okay, so if you want to invest in indices, you've got to love graphs. Sorry if you don't, you're in the wrong meeting. What I've graphed you here, and, and I've, 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 I'm going to show you a few graphs, I think three, and each one over a different period. So this is the longest one, a 12-year window that I'm going to show you, but I'm going to I'll specifically pick different periods to show you how very different it looks depending on your investment horizon. So the first thing is, what are the units? What do we measure this thing in index in? Um, indices are measured in index points. So for example, the top 40 is at the moment at 46,000 index points. The number by itself means nothing. Okay, the absolute number doesn't mean anything. It's not in rands, it doesn't represent anything, it's just an average indi indication of the price level. So you cannot say, well, the top 40 is at 46,000 and the all shares at 51,000, therefore the all shares are more valuable. Okay, that's a very, very important concept. And the reason for that is all of our indices started at different levels or started at different times. So if the index goes up by 10%, it just means it moves from 40,000 to 44,000. Um, and that's where the value of the number comes in when you want to compare two points of the same index to see how it's moved over time. So what I've done here is I've started the index at 100 points, which was not the value that I started at. But at the end of the day, I can g give it to you in any kind of units. Um, and it doesn't matter because the actual movement is more important than the absolute price level. This is the top 40 index, uh, market cap weighted um, over 12 years. There are two indices here, and we published both of these. The what is that? Blue? Green? I'm a man. You'll forgive me. The bottom line, green. There we go. They're actually different, huh? There we go. Let me look at that one. The green line um, is the price index, which is our average price. And the red one is the total return index. What that means is very, very important to you. Because every company on the JSC, every equity or most equities, will pay you a regular dividend either every six months or every year or every four months, whatever the case may be, they will pay some of their earnings that they make in the year back to the investors, some of their profit they'll pay it back to you. Now, you generally have two options. You can say, all right, thank you very much. I'm going to take my dividend every six months, and I'm going, going to go and buy a new dress, a new set of golf clubs, a new car, whatever the case may be, and I'm going to spend it. That is the green line. All right, so if you invested 100 Rand 12 years ago, and you spent all your dividends, you would today have exactly 450 Rand. Okay. If you took those dividends and reinvested them back into the index, that is the red line. So the same 100 Rand with no money in or out, if you just took those dividends and reinvested them, you would today have 620 Rand. Okay. Dividends are important. Think carefully about the income that you get and how you're spending it and what you're saving it for. I know I'd rather be on the red line. But obviously, I'd also like the golf clubs. So it's your choice. You're the investor. All right. Um, the next question is, is that good? 
you know, is that a good return? Have I made a lot of money? What do I compare it to? So you can say, well, all right, you know, if I'd invested my 100 Rand there, two years later, I'd still have 100 Rand. That's not very nice. Six and a half years later, I'd have 150 Rand. Also not very good. So if you look there, you know, my money would have increased from 100, so that's the global financial crisis, 2008, um, to just under 200, and I would have lost, you know, almost a third of my money effectively in a month. All right. That's why asset class is important, because you don't often see movements like that. I won't say never, because we don't predict the future in this business. Um, you won't often see movements like that in many of the other asset classes. Cash, for example, is very stable. It's a fairly stable line. Bonds, equally so. Um, equities are probably the most volatile to invest in, but again, over time, the highest expected return. Okay, so what do we compare it to? What I've given you here, and what are we on here, is sort of a seven and a half year view. So if I invested 100 Rand um, on the 1st of January 2007, how much money would I have today? And the green line says if I'd invested that money in the top 40 index, and this is the total return, so with dividends reinvested, I would be sitting at a portfolio value of around about 250 Rand today, 2.5 times up. If I'd taken the same 100 Rand and put it into a bond index, um, our all bond index, that would be the red line, and you'll see that it's uh, less volatile, so less spiky, less up and down, less jagged, but over time a low return, and I'd be sitting at 180 Rand or so. And finally, if I put my money into a money market account, um, which is the mustard I'll go with, the mustard line, you would be sitting at around about 175 Rand today. All right, so when you're comparing these things, compare asset class to asset class, compare index to index, look at the history over time, what you want to look at is how spiky is the line, how jagged, how volatile is it, how big are the losses, so can I accept a loss like that, you know, if I need to draw the money out to buy a house next year, next month, whatever that is, and that happens tomorrow, I'm in real trouble. So your timeline, your horizon for investing is important. All right, there are three variants of the top 40 index. Ooh, I need to speed up a bit um, that I'm going to speak about. The top 40 itself, which is market cap weighted, shareholder weighted top 40, our SWIX top 40, which basically what we do there is we have a few companies that are dual listed. You can buy them both on the JSE or on the London Stock Exchange or any other various exchanges. And they tend to be slightly overweighted in our index because they're trading in lots of different markets. So the SWIX index, we basically downweight dual listed companies. Um, and I'll show you what that means in a second. And we've got an equally weighted top 40 variant as well, where they will literally take your money and put it to 2.5%, 2.5%, 2.5% in all 40 companies. All right. Now, it's not enough. I've told you must choose an asset class. And then we've got, you know, 60 indices or 100 indices and 1,000 ETFs. I now give you three variants of the same index. How much does it matter? Those are the three variants of the top 40 over a five-year time horizon. All right, the market cap weighted, the SWIX market cap weighted, and the equally weighted. Um, again, not, it's obviously not as different as equities versus bonds. Okay, so the finer and finer you go into your selection, the less important over the long term it becomes in terms of performance. And this is where you start getting a preference to say, I like this product versus that product. I like these weights versus those weights. Okay, so on the, in, on the performance side, we don't really distinguish. Where we can distinguish is what's inside your basket. All right, so this is a, a look at those three indices currently, and you'll see um, the top 40 index, the headline one, has currently got around about 16% of your money in financial stocks, 54% in industrial stocks, and 28% in resource stocks. However, the equally weighted line, the green line, has got 32% in financial stocks and less in resources. So if you say, well, okay, I want exposure to the top 40 biggest companies, but I think resources are going to do really well, you want to be in the top 40 and not an equally weighted top 40. So even within this market cap strategy, you've got a, a chance to sort of choose between, to make some calls on what you think is going to do well and what's going to do badly. And if you're right, you'll do better than the other variant of the index. All right, my last slide I'm going to speak about um, is concentration. And this, as you remember, I said our market is dominated very much by some really big companies, um, some, some heavyweights, mark, uh, large caps. And what I've done here is I've just given you the five biggest instruments in each of those three variants um, out of the top 40. Um, so you'll see in our vanilla top 40, BHP Bulletin, which is a diversified global miner. 
is sitting at around about 12.5%. That means if you invest 100 Rand in the index, 12 Rand 50 will go into Billiton, all right? Um, SAB Miller, 10%, uh, Nuspass, and so on. Um, now, BHP Billiton is a dual listed company, as is SAB Miller. They're both listed in the UK, in London. So you'll see here in the 640, those companies are, have got a lower weight. Um, so SAB is down to 4.8, for example, a much smaller weight. And some of the local companies, Nuspass, MTN, and Sassel, have a much bigger weight. All right, and then finally, our equally weighted top 40 index, you'll see um, basically we, res we reset that index quarterly. So once a quarter, we set everything to exactly 2.5%. And then over the quarter, they move slightly, and then we rebalance it every quarter. All right, I am going to stop there. Um, if you'll hold your questions, I think, till afterwards, because I think I have run slightly over. Um, there are my contact details. You're welcome to jot them down. Um, you are welcome at any stage to call me, to email my team. Uh, we love helping people. We love talking to people. Um, so please don't be shy. Thank you very much.